Welcome back to NB Media and Content. Today, I'll be featuring the Toyota Corolla Cross. It's a jacked up version of the Corolla hatchback that fits into an SUV body. And it's the type of vehicle you should consider if you're looking at things like the Nissan Qashqai, Hyundai Kona, the Mazda CX-30, and the Honda HRV. Prices for the Corolla Cross start from $33,000 and to obtain one of these, you need to wait at least nine to 12 months. So what makes the Corolla Cross so popular? Well, in this review, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about it. I'm gonna run you through its model grades, the exterior design, the interior features, the technology, its practicality, and then I'm going to drive it. Before we start, if you get value out of my content, please give it a like, share and subscribe. Now the model grades are a free variant to choose from, the GX, GXL and the Atmos. And it's available in either petrol power or petrol hybrid. In this review, I'll be featuring this GXL model grade in front wheel drive hybrid form, thanks to Southern Highland Toyota who are located in Moss Vale. They have lent me their demonstrated film. And if you'd like to get in contact with them on your next car purchase, their details are in the description below. Okay, moving on to the exterior design of the Corolla Cross. So this features additional body cladding on the bottom, as well as a blue Toyota logo on the badge here, stating that this is the hybrid variant. And on this GXL model grade, you get full LED daytime running lights, opposed to the standard halogen bulbs and fog lights on the bottom. And if we have a look at the side of the Corolla Cross, as you can see, it features privacy glass, roof rails, 17 inch alloy wheels, as well as body cladding around the wheel arches. And lastly, moving on to the rear design of the Corolla Cross, extra additional body cladding on the bottom as well as slightly tinted rear tail lights at the back on this GXL model grade and overall there are 10 colors to choose from white is a no-cost option the others are $700 and this one is finished in sterling silver now the design of the Corolla Cross I would love to hear your feedback in the comments below but for now I'm gonna move on to the interior okay moving on to the interior inside the Corolla Cross in terms of standard equipment you get a remote key keyless entry and push button start so the overall design layout very similar to the standard Corolla hatch back on which it's based on but that means it's built really well so you do have some nice touch points on the doors on the top of the dashboard it gets a bit durable but on parts you actually touch this is soft to the touch so it all feels very sturdy and very well built like any other Toyota product now comparing some of the key features to this GXL spec opposed to the GX model grade, you get a leather wrap steering wheel opposed to a plastic one and a leather gear knob as well as a larger infotainment screen. So in terms of equipment levels, it feels like you're getting a little bit more in this model specification, part leather seats, so half leather, softer fabric opposed to just standard cloth seats. And overall, I think they're much more supportive and to get comfortable behind the wheel, the steering offers both tilt and reach adjustment. And the seat has lumbar support and you can jack it up really high, giving you a nice clear view of your surroundings and you can manually control the adjustment in various positions. So overall, it's easy to find a nice driving position behind the wheel. Let's now move on to the infotainment. So it all runs off this touchscreen 10.5 inch display. You've also got some physical buttons for the volume and physical controls for the single zone climate control. And you can also use the buttons on the steering wheel here and along the right side as well. If you do decide to use a touchscreen, it's fairly simple. The layout is pretty clear and responsive. And some of the key features include inbuilt satellite navigation, voice recognition, and for media functions, you have FM, AM, and DAB radio with full Bluetooth streaming, wireless Apple CarPlay, and wired Android Auto, as well as mirror car smartphone mirroring. You could also look at various information like your fuel consumption, trip information, as well as the energy flow on the hybrid powertrain, showing you what the battery is doing, the front wheels are doing, and the regenerative energy going back into the battery. In terms of safety features, if I just flick it into reverse, as you can see, it features a 360 view camera with parking guidelines, which you can change with that button there. And if you click on view, as you can see, it shows a view of the front wheels, as well as lane departure warning and lane keeping assistant. So that means the car has the ability to steer itself into the lanes. There's also blind spot monitoring on the wing mirrors as well as radar guided cruise control that you can set the distance behind the car in front of you and it will follow its speed. There's also a road sign assistant as well as autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist protection. To me is a seven inch multi-color display showing me various information. If I just use the steering wheel buttons to scroll down the menu, looking at trip information, media functions, assistance features. And lastly, moving on to practicality. So we'll start with the glove box. As you can see, that's a pretty decent size. And you also have 
a little phone slot just down here with a USB-A charging port. And in the centre, two large cup holders that could fit a litre of water. There's all some decent centre storage that you can throw various items in. And it also reveals a 12 volt socket. And on the doors, large side bins with large bottle holders. Moving on to the back seats inside the Corolla Cross. So I'm a full size adult. I've got the driver's seat set in my position. And as you can see, I've got good knee room, good toe room and good head room. And if I move over to the middle seat, as you can see, again, good knee room, toe room, and good headroom. In terms of features, you have rear air conditioning vents with two USB-C charging ports, two large cup holders on either side of the doors, and a single mat pocket behind the passenger seat. And for baby seats, two ISO fix points on the two outboard seats, and right behind me, three top tether points. Okay, moving on to the boot space. So the overall opening, as you can see, it's nice and wide. That makes it easy loading items into the boot. You do get a load lip here, but other than that, pretty spacious. And in terms of the overall capacity, it all varies depending on which powertrain and driveline you go for. However, in the real world, it doesn't really make much of a difference. It is still a pretty spacious boot regardless on which variant you go for. However, on this front wheel drive variant, it features a temporary spare wheel opposed to the run flat tires with the tire repair kit. And you've also got some tie down hooks around the boot floor. And if you require additional storage, you can fold the second row down. So overall, it is pretty practical and spacious, especially in the boot. So let's now move on to the powertrain. Okay, under the bonnet. So the variant I'm featuring has the two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder petrol hybrid system. It's mated to a CVT transmission and power is sent to the front wheels. In my opinion, compared to other rivals in the segment, Toyota produced the best hybrid systems and they have been proven to be very reliable over the years. Not only you get better performance out of the powertrain, but you also get better fuel consumption. Toyota claims this will achieve 4.3 litres per 100, and it's only two and a half grand to step up to the hybrid variant, and it has a seven year powertrain warranty and a 10 year battery warranty if you service with Toyota. And the intervals are every 12 months or 15,000 kilometers for both the petrol and hybrid, with an average service costing around $230. So with the specifications out of the way, let's now take it for a drive. In terms of fuel consumption, I'm currently averaging around five liters per 100, and that's after a bit of acceleration. To monitor everything, what the car is actually doing, you can go into the car menu, energy flow and have a look at the powertrain where the battery is sending all of its energy and what components are currently active and when you drive around town all that you hear is the electric motor you don't really hear the engine as much because in hybrid mode of course it's going to be really quiet and in terms of ride comfort as you can see with the camera footage it's soaking the bumps up really well and in terms of the steering feel it's nice and light to maneuver around tight junctions a really good turning circle and in terms of parking if i just demonstrate that for you now you've got the 360 view camera large wing mirrors so you can dart it close to the curb as you can see large wing mirrors really good visibility right at the back and combined with the petrol engine and the hybrid powertrain you do get better acceleration so if you put your foot down it responds really well and I think Toyota produce really good hybrid powertrains, much better than many of its competitors. And it's only two and a half thousand dollars extra. I know to some people that's a lot of money, but the car retains its value, it's better on fuel, it's more refined. It's definitely worth stepping up to a hybrid in any Toyota pro product if it is available. In terms of if I would go front wheel drive or all wheel drive, it really depends on preference and also on how you're gonna use the car. So obviously if you're on a farm, muddy time back, probably the all wheel drive variant will be right for you. But for everyday driving, the front wheel drive is fine. It's currently raining. I'm sitting on a wet road around the back roads of the Southern Highlands and it's got plenty of grip. So for that purpose, it's perfect. I've got a cruise control, just setting it in position takes time to work out, but once you get used to it, it works really well. And as you can see, it steer itself into the lane when you veer off. It's not a full driving capability, but it's nice to know it actually works really well. So as you can see, it steers itself into the lane when it thinks that you're gonna veer off and eventually it will tell me to put my hands back on the wheel. And setting the radar guided cruise control is fairly easy, pretty straightforward. So there you go, it tells me um, deactivated once you get distracted for a little bit. 
So with the short driving impressions out of the way, let's now wrap up the video with a verdict. So if you want a Toyota Corolla, but you need some additional space and you want to sit slightly higher, well, this could be the car for you. And it's also very practical, spacious, and it comes with good technology features. So thanks for watching my video. Please give it a like, share, and subscribe. Comment down below what you think of the Toyota Corolla Cross, and I will see you in the next film.